Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you everything in the graphics options in the options menu and basically what you can change if you don't have the best graphics card and have low FPS. So before we get into that, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already to be notified of future videos and to support this channel, which is right below. <laughs> so, let's get into it. So you may notice that some of these things are currently blurred out. That's because we have light, Lighting 2.0 on, which was released when uh, Star Trek Online was ported over to Xbox and PS4. So, overall, it's a cluster of big improvements to graphics, and but you can turn it off, which will also increase your FPS. So let me just uh, show you one thing before we get into it. So, if you type show, if you uh, type show FPS one. It'll show you FPS. And if you want to turn it off, just type show FPS 0. And show FPS 2 gives you some extra, um, you know, some, some extra tooltips, but let's keep it there so I can help demonstrate some stuff. Okay. So turning it off will increase your FPS ever so slightly. Uh, <laughs> So for now you are able to use post-processing, so basically, yeah, it's just full-screen pro-processing pro um, effects. So turning it off will increase your FPS. And bloom quality, well that's... Okay, I'm going to cover everything that hasn't been covered, uh, that has that is disabled by um, lighting 2.0, and then we'll turn back on so you can see better differences. So reflection quality, well that's how things reflect light, as you can see all around on this flooring. And max lights per object, well that's basically how many lights get shone onto objects. Okay, let's turn lighting 2.0 back on. Okay. So, um... Bloom quality, well that's how bright things can be. I mean, the blooming effect. So you can turn it off, and it will increase your FPS. So, I'm already at a pretty high FPS, so you will not notice much difference. But, it's a thing. Okay, screen ambient occlusion, screen space ambient occlusion, so this um, lights up um, creases and shadows and all that, and turning it off will give you a slightly less natural look, as you can see, but will increase your performance, just like everything else. Cinematic um, focus, depth of view, so if you have that focusing, thing as seen on cameras, focusing away from faraway objects and all that. Lens flare quality, so if you get lens flares on Calvin Timeline ships or lens flare effects from stars, that's what that is. Underwater view, I have no water on this bridge so I can't really show that correctly, but basically it's the refraction you get when you walk into water. Those kind of effects, if you turn it off it's just gonna be a matte effect and it, it the refraction is turned off basically extra anisotropic filtering so the higher it is the smoother your image basically what it is as you can see and also some nice texturing things in here and there okay visual effect quality so you got high medium and low the lower it is the worse your effects are going to look, but also your FPS will increase. So, medium, for example, turns off your impulse trails. You will still have your, um, your, um, warp trails, but, yeah, it just turns a few things down. And low, you will have no trails at all, and your beam weapons will look thinner, and your cannon weapons, instead of having trails, it's just going to be a ball of energy. Soft particles, so... Smooth edges on smoke and all that. 
mostly it mostly shows in combat. Refreshing quality, that's part of lighting 1.0, so we're gonna skip that. And I've already called, covered it, so... <laughs> world distance, so how far you can see buildings and all that, so... For example, lowering it... Blurs out everything else. And, uh, when you're flying towards a planet, if you're far away... It's just gonna look like a... A circle... Silhouette thing. So, you will not be able to see, um... The land, the ocean, or whatever. So... If you want to have a nice looking world, turn will de detail distance to maximum. And of course, lowering will increase performance. Terrain distance, so that's like seeing rocks, seeing, um, seeing grass, seeing shrubs like that. So if you don't care for those, you can turn it off. On some, some of my lower end computers, I do keep it to minimum. Character detail, now this one's fun. So look at my bridge officer there. So if you turn it to minimum or any lower value, the farther they the farther they are from you, <laughs> the worse they look. So now they look like. <laughs> so if you ever want to see a blob person, it's an option. But yeah, I try to keep it to max even on my worst computers, just because it looks creepy otherwise. High detail objects, well, shows a more detailed world. It's not very noticeable, but uh, same thing with um, grass and shrubs and all that small little details in there, it will take those away. Max physics debris objects, so when something blows up, or if some of the newer um, weapons, when you hit um, unshielded hull, will blast off sections of it. So you can turn that down to, well, take those away and increase performance. Lighting 2.0, we talked about that. Dynamic lighting, so... For example, when you're firing weapons and there's light coming out... You can notice that it also lights up the surroundings. So if you turn that off... Those lighting effects are gone. So there's... That's that. Shadows. You guys knows, know what shadows are, but... Turning off shadows is actually... Um, one of the easiest ways to increase FPS, because these actually take up quite a lot of resources. So, um, the lower you go, if you still want shadows, will give you slightly more jagged shadows, and off as well. No shadows at all. Match shadowed light, well that's just... If there's a lot of lights, you're gonna get multiple shadows, and... The lower it is, the less shadows you'll have. Of course, this is not going to change at all if you have um, shadows off. Okay, now let's move on to display, and also I'll move on to advanced later, because those actually are still relevant to this. So, first up your display mode. So full screen, you got to change your full screen resolution and full screen refresh rate. So um, for resolution, um, it's mostly recommended that you keep your um, your PC's native resolution, so that's at the very bottom. So just select that, just for overall smoothness. And we'll cover um, lowering your resolution in one bit, so refresh rate, if your computer um, supports that, you can also change. Brightness, so that this screen you get when you first install the game, and basically allows you to control how clear you see things if your um, monitor is not so good with um, rendering lights. And aspect ratio, so that's 4x3, 9, 16x19, 16x10. Just keep it to auto. It, it automatically scales for you. Monitor vertical sync, so this synchronizes your uh, monitor to your, well, your drawing of your monitor with vertical refresh, so turning it on may increase FPS, but it can cause tearing in images, and that's not pretty. Resolution scale is a cruder way to control your resolution, so let me just change back to window maximize because I like multitasking. And, um, yeah, it just changes the resolution crudely, but, um, it slightly makes your game slightly smoother than changing this resolution, and we'll get further into this in a bit. 
Now anti-aliasing. I did make a video on the different types of anti-aliasing available in Star Trek Online way back when I <laughs> when I first created this account, but um, the quality on that's not so good, so let me just go over this again, and if you don't want to, you're not interested in this, you can skip over to the advanced section in a bit. So, Star Trek Online has three types in addition to none, so let me just move closer to my bridge officer so you can see the differences. Okay, so look at Mr. Spell here. So MSAA, also known as multi-sampling anti-aliasing, is um, pretty much the most common type of anti-aliasing and all it does is smooths up polygons and looks the most natural. So um, I keep it at 4 because while my graphics card is good, it's not the best, so the higher it is, the more tank your FPS is going to get. So yeah, that's basically what it does. It smooths up polygons and gives you a natural look. And PXAA is Temporal Anti-Aliasing. It's, uh, it's a new technology on newer graphics cards and combines most anti-aliasing technologies that have been developed over time. And um, it's more of a jack-of-all-trades, so it doesn't look as good as MSAA, but it takes slightly less processing power. So you can notice that it gets slightly blurrier. Now FXAA, which is fact, a fast approximate anti-aliasing, is an anti-aliasing technology developed for lower-end graphics cards. So if you do want smoother edges and you don't have a very good graphics card, it's the way to go. So basically what this does is um, instead of smoothing out edges, it just blurs them. So overall your game is going to look blurrier, but it's not going to have the jagged lines that you would get if you have, well, none at all. So I personally use MSA times 4. Okay. Now advanced. So let me just cover these three first, as they're the most relevant to um, graphic. So blue intensity, well that's how bright things will look, though so, for example, look at right here. It just increases or decreases your bloom. So having a zero with bloom on will just, of course, not give you any bloom at all. And I personally just keep it at, at 100. And if you're, uh, if you have those uh, special vanity um, impulse trails, having it at very high will give you well huge amount of huge amounts of engine trails, just for a little fun. All right, so bloom in, I mean, uh, world texture detail. So this is how well textured the world will look. And um, values over a hundred are not very noticeable. So keep it at a hundred if you can support that. Character detail, well that's how smooth your characters will look. Same thing, values over 100 are not very noticeable. Alright, so let's move on to the rest, and these two are pretty much an additional layer of um, resolution scaling if um, you need that. So reduce file streaming, it, um, well, reduces the amount of data that's loaded onto your RAM, and turn this off on systems with low amounts of RAM can lead to crashes, so... But the general um, advice is just keep it on. Even if you have high amounts of RAM. Software cursor, well, it gives you a software cursor instead of your regular hardware cursor. Um, and fixes the issues of disappearing cursors on some video cards. But of course it's less smooth than your actual cursor. Uh, minimum, minimum shadow buffer bias, so turning it on will just make your shadows look worse. But of course, increase performance. Reduce CPU, GPU usage. So, if your um, computer has cooling problems or your computer gets too hot, it's one way to um, circumvent that. So, it will lower the overall performance of your game, but of course, your FPS will drop due to that. So, unless you really need it, turn it off. Uh, frame rate stabilizer. So, if it stalls, it's going to control that, make your game overall smoother, but then of course your overall FPS will be lower. 
auto stabilized frame rate. So if your um, your game has FPS stalls very in a very short amount of time, it's gonna well smooth that out. Limit CPU usage while inactive. So if you switch to another window and you're multitasking or something like that, it um, artificially lowers your FPS so that you can have a little bit more RAM for other tasks. Multi-core rendering. So basically, if you if your um, CPU has more than one core, keep it on. That's just that that's just what it is. It doesn't it doesn't. Um, change your FPS at all, unless of course you, your CPU only has one core, but what CPU still has one core these days, but anyways, that's what that is. And limit frame rate, well, that, that's your maximum frame rate. So um, actually setting it to 60 does not guarantee you 60 FPS, it actually drops it to around 58, 59, so being that my computer can support that, I just keep it at 120. Um, even though it never reaches that. And basically, same thing with um, reduced CPU, GPU um, usage. If you're having cooling issues, that's one way to, another way to fix that. Okay, so that's it for um, the options menu. But there's a few more things. So I've already covered no FPS, so there's also render scale. So this basically ups your resolution even more than what you have, so by default, SCO is set to render scale 1. So you can go to render scale 2 to give you an even higher resolution. But of course, as you can see, my um, FPS just dropped. <laughs> and you can keep going to even render scale 4 and just very, very smooth image, but then of course, your FPS is going to suffer a lot. So this is great for screenshots. But of course, for regular gameplay, if you don't want to use this, so put render scale back to 1. Unless, of course, your computer's graphics card can support that, then do whatever you want. Alright, well that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and ring the notification bell to be notified of future videos, and support this channel. It's free, so why not? And uh, if you want to support me through Patreon, that's in the, in the description. And as well, if you want to join my currently very small Discord server, that's also in the description. Thanks for watching, see you guys next time, bye!